All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to evaluate another crazy integral, which is the integral of the integral of square root of dt of with respect to square root of dt, which if you remember in my previous videos, square root of dt, it's another name for dw, an integral of square root of dt, I just like to call this w. So today we will see what the integral of w dw is. And if you watch my previous videos, um, that's just a proof of the second fact that I wrote down. Now, what is w? It's, as I said, a correct analog of square root of dt, and that's Brownian motion. So in case you need a reminder, what is Brownian motion? It's some stochastic process, which means for every t, you get a random path with the following properties. So it starts at zero, and moreover, so suppose you go to t and then you go to s to get ws, and then you get wt. Then if t is close to s, what this is saying is that wt is not much further than ws. So, and in particular, the way to write it here is we assume it's the increments are normally distributed. So wt minus ws follows a normal law. And lastly, we have sort of a memoryless property. So if you go up to WT1 and then go to WT2 and go to WT3, then if you're at WT1, you don't remember what happens. So basically, all those increments, they're all independent. So WT1, WT2 minus WT1, up to WTN minus WTN minus 1 are independent. And as I said, our goal today is to integrate W dW, and the way we will do this is with a Riemann sum. So let, again, consider the following scenario. In this case, to simplify, let's do the interval from 0 to t, and again, subdivide it into little things. So you have t naught, which is zero, t1, t2, dot, 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 up to tn. And the very important thing is, in each interval, you choose a random point, but the same random point. For example, if you choose the midpoint here, then you always choose the midpoint. If you choose the left point here, you always choose the left point. And if you choose, let's say, a third point here, you always choose the third point here. So in particular, let tau k be a point in that in each subinterval with the same, uh, um, what's it called? Um, uh, with sort of the same distribution. Maybe there was tau n minus 1 or something. Uh, Namely, in other words, let tau k, again, so let uh, tk be, so 0 plus k delta t, so uh, t, t over n or something. So yeah, tk is uh, 0 plus k t n, so k t over n, and then let tau k, so that's very important, be 1 minus lambda tk plus lambda tk plus 1. Where the important thing is, lambda does not depend on k. So for lambda equals 1 half, it would be the midpoint. For lambda equals 0, it would be the left point. The point is, we don't just choose a random point, we choose a very specific random point. Then, consider the Riemann sums. So Rn is the sum from 0 to, inf to n. Of what? We integrating the function w, so you evaluate w at this point tau k, or maybe from this one to n minus 1, and times, now, usually you do dt, so tk plus 1 minus tk, but because your increments are dw, you do w, tk plus 1 minus w tk. 
that is your analog of the Riemann sum. And the question is, what does that converge to? It turns out, claim, and this is super interesting, because usually Riemann sums are supposed to be independent of your choice of points. Here it turns out it's dependent on your choice of points. And indeed the answer is wt squared over 2 plus lambda minus 1 half t. And which is actually almost a correct answer because what should the answer there be? It should be 1 half w squared of t minus 1 half w squared at 0, but w squared at 0 is just 0. So it's almost the correct answer except for this extra part. And indeed, as I said, there are two different definitions there are. The, e, the Stratonovich definition says, let lambda be 1 half, then this result is exactly correct. And the Ito definition says, let lambda be 0, because we want a non-anticipating process. We don't know what the future holds, so let's just be safe and guess what, about, uh, guess what we have in the present. Okay, and now let me prove this. And it's also a really cute analysis proof. Because what is analysis? You just add and subtract terms and hope for the best. So step one, consider this part in the sum. And for a second, I'll just let tau be tau k. So, uh, or in fact, no, let me let tau k, it's easier. So like, consider w tau k times w t k plus one minus w t k. It's the stuff we want to sum up on. And here's a nice thing. You will write it as follows. That is, and again, it's not quite clear why this is true, but I'll give you some motivation in a second. Let's add and subtract W T K. So we get W tau K minus W T K plus W T K. This times W T K plus one, and then add and subtract W tau K. So uh, minus W tau K plus W tau K minus W T K. And here's the reason why we do this. It's because ultimately we would have right to have some kind of square. You see, and the way we do this is with this procedure. So then when you expand it out, you get, let's see, W tau K plus one, uh, sorry, W tau K minus W T K times this thing, W T K plus one minus w tau k. Okay, that's the first term. Then the term that we want, the square term, so w tau k minus w t k squared. So you first foil this and then foil this, and then you have this last term plus w t k times this whole final term, which is, you know, uh, basically the beginning term, w t k plus 1 minus w tau k plus w tau k minus w t k. And we will deal with the first two terms in a second, but let's deal with the last term. Let's play with this, and notice there is a cancellation here. So it turns out it's slightly easier than you think. So with the, the last term is just WTK times WTK plus 1 minus WTK. And let's see what this equals to. This is one step one prime, it's an intermediary step. And again, it's not quite clear why we do this. I was very uh, shocked when I saw that. So uh, tk plus one minus wtk. Well, the idea is sort of to complete the square. So we have wtk times wtk plus one minus wtk squared. This is good, this is a square. Here, let's complete the square. So think of this as AB, 
okay? But AB, what it is, it's really, uh, what is it, A minus B squared, or was it, uh, let's see, um, what kind of is it? Well, uh -huh. I'll explain it in a second. So basically what we have, this looks like WTK minus WTK plus 1 squared. Except if you do that, you get a minus 2WTK, WTK plus 1. To remedy this, let's do a minus 1 half. And then what do you get? Minus 1 half WTK squared. To remedy that, we get a plus 1 half WTK squared. And to remedy this, we get, uh, I think, uh, another plus 1 half WTK plus 1 squared. And then still the original term, WTK squared. You'll see why we do this. It's actually quite beautiful. So we have 1 half WTK minus WTK plus 1 squared. And then, what does that become? So we get uh, still the 1 half WTK plus 1 squared minus 1 half WTK squared. Because we have 1 half minus 1, which is minus 1 half. But remember, this was our term, our, uh, the term we want to be summed over. So in particular, this term we will sum over k. But look, this is precisely a telescoping sum. This is like 1 half W, I don't know, T2 squared minus 1 half W T1 squared plus 1 half W T3 squared minus 1 half W T2 squared. And basically it becomes a telescoping sum. And what's left after the telescoping sum is the final term. So 1 half W, our right point, squared minus one-half W of the left point squared. And remember, W zero is zero, so this is zero. So essentially, after summing up, we get the sum of all those negative terms plus one of the terms that we want. Okay, good. So now, we basically analyze this term, except for this term here. And so, let's now calculate our Rn, which is the sum of all those three terms. So, step two. What is Rn? First of all, the sum of, what was it, this term, right? For, uh, yeah, um, no, <laughs> let's start here. It's this last term, which is 1 half WT squared. I, I don't want to mess up with the order. That's why uh, I want to be careful here. 1 half WT squared minus the sum of this. Minus the sum over K, again from 1 to N, of WTK plus 1. Or I guess 0 from N to N minus 1 or something. This term squared. Let's call this A. And then those terms. So W tau K minus W T K times all this stuff. So if you're still watching, I'm impressed. So, <laughs> sum over K. Um, this one actually is better because it's a square. So uh, W tau K minus W tk squared, and then plus the sum of this cross term, wtk plus 1 minus w tau times, sorry, tau k, times w tau k, this uh, times uh, w tau k minus wt, minus wtk. Okay, so we have the term that we want, a term A, a term B, and a term C. And it looks like it will be taking forever, but don't worry, it's actually not too bad. And then term 
frequency. Because it turns out this term we've already done. Because what is this saying? You take the sum of differences of W squared. And it's almost like the, int actually exactly, the integral of square root of dt. So if you repeat the proof I've done in a previous video, you get that this just goes to b minus a, which in this case is t with this minus 1 half. So step 3. So study of a. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I've been looking for the good marker. But the point is a then goes to minus 1 half times t. Uh, so this thing, uh, a goes to minus t over 2. And I don't know if I mentioned, but the convergence in L is in L2. OK, and then um, that's one thing. And then, again, if you want to see a proof, it's in the previous video. And then this term here, it's almost, it's basically similar because we're just saying we're taking a W and increments of this and we're squaring. So with a similar proof, so study of P, we get actually that B goes to, turns out, lambda T. And lambda because of this choice of a T tau K. Again, it's not quite the same proof, but it's similar. And again, I don't want to waste your time. And I don't know why I wrote two. It's supposed to be four. So really, the only thing we still need to worry about is this C. And remember, the convergence is in L2, which means that uh, you just take the expectation of the difference squared. So mm, in particular, what we would like to show is that uh, this term actually goes to 0 in L2. So if we take the expectation of this squared, it goes to 0. And then we're essentially done, because we just put everything on the left-hand side, take expectation squared. We're left with this junk that goes to 0. So we're good. So study of C. This is also really neat. Hope it's still recording. So uh, step five. Study of C. Well, take the expectation of this whole junk squared. K sum over K. W T K plus one minus W tau K. And then W tau K minus W T K squared. Now here's the thing, remember what tau k is. We have tk, tau k is a random point in that interval, and tk plus 1. In particular, notice those two things, they have no overlap. So in particular, remember, Brownian motions has independent increments. So going from tk to tau k, and going from tau k to tk plus 1, those are independent processes. Which means that you can just, first of all, put the expectation in the sum, and you can separate those two things out. That's the definition of independent. Wtk plus 1 minus w tau k squared. And uh, close the parentheses. And expectation of Wtk minus w tau k squared. Now, there's just one little thing we need, so we use independent increments. And remember, those things are normally distributed. So this is, follows the normal law with tk plus 1 minus tau k. And this follows the normal law of uh, 0 and then uh, tau k minus tk. Okay, so maybe reverse, basically the bigger one minus the smaller one. And in particular, what is this? It's precisely the variance of uh, our normal random variable, which is tk plus 1 minus tau k, and tau k uh, 
minus tk. So what you're left with is the sum over k of tk plus 1 minus tau, tau minus tk. And then just calculate those terms. So remember tau is 1 minus lambda tk plus lambda tk plus 1. So tk plus 1 minus tau, that's, I think, uh, if you subtract lambda, you get, um, sorry, tk plus 1, uh, what was it doing? Um, yeah, tk plus 1 minus tau, you get uh, lambda minus 1, tk uh, plus 1 minus lambda, tk plus 1. Uh, subtract all this stuff and then you get this and similarly uh, tau minus tk I don't want to erase that unfortunately no let me put it somewhere up because again we are almost done so that's one thing and then the second thing is tau minus tk that's minus lambda tk you can calculate it plus lambda tk plus 1, and that's lambda tk plus 1 minus tk. Which tells you you're just multiplying those two things. And so, what do we get? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, this thing, I forgot to say, you can factor out as 1 minus lambda tk plus 1 minus tk. But remember, that's 1 minus lambda, and this is just your little increment, delta t, which in this case is t over n. And this becomes also lambda t over n. And so if you multiply the two things, you get sum over k, maybe with inequalities, but sum over k of lambda, 1 minus lambda, t over n times lambda t over n and then what you left with is simply uh, 1 minus lambda times uh, times lambda times t squared over n squared and then you sum the constant 1 over k to get n this cancels out and then last but not least if you now take the limit as n go to infinity, this term goes to zero. So indeed, with this um, weird upside down picture, you get that indeed the expectation of this random variable goes to zero. So now, coming back to our thing, what do we get? We get that this term goes to 1 half wt squared. This term goes to uh, minus t over 2. This term goes to lambda t, and this term goes to zero. So what do we get? We basically get Rn goes to one half wt squared plus lambda minus one half t, which let me check, that is uh, precisely what we wanted. So indeed, in L2, we have that this holds, and then we are done. So indeed, now we have calculated this weird integral, and we get that. Interestingly, it depends on the endpoints. So I've never seen that before, but this is really cool. All right, so if you like that and you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.